Welcome to Oversharing with the Overbees. I'm Joe. And I'm Matt. And each week you can tune in to hear us respond to your voicemails, go in depth on our lives as content creators, and hopefully leave you feeling even better than we found you. With that being said, let's get to Oversharing. Welcome back to Oversharing with the Overbees. Yeah, after our unplanned hiatus. Unplanned hiatus. Guys, we've got to get back on a better schedule. I feel like since adding a second kiddo to our lives, actually just in general, the last Uh couple of years, since introducing kids, schedule and time management all of a sudden completely fell apart for me. Mm -hmm. And And we weren't incredible to begin with. Oh, I completely disagree. I feel like I was a pretty good time manager before. Yeah. And then you just managed both of our time. And it's, I can't manage both of our time with two children. No, It's not probable. It's not going well. (laughs) And so what keeps happening is it's podcast day and Matt and I haven't recorded. Yeah. And we love recording. And then like last podcast day, you ended up having like six meetings and then plans for even a late recording. So it was just like, well, I guess this is way too much information for you guys. But anyway, yeah, we're back though. (laughs) And we should be good to go now. Yeah. And the thing that keeps happening too is we've been traveling so much yeah like we get home i feel like i get my bag unpacked we get settled we get back into our routine and then we're packing our car again Mm -hmm. and it's way too much yeah and every time you get home you just like your body and brain just decompress you just feel like you're you're having to get back into everything well our travel so i i was supposed to be gone the rest of august yeah for trips and all of them got canceled <laughs> <laughs> like i was supposed to be going at a million miles an hour uh-huh. we we have a wedding that we're attending this weekend yeah and then after that it was supposed to be non-stop travel for me but you were with me for the trip at the end of august yeah with the kids uh and then all of a sudden it was like dominoes started falling and I didn't cancel anything. No, none of it was on your Other people just behest. started canceling on me left and right. And uh, so maybe <laughs> maybe I should think about why that's happening. <laughs> but uh, now I don't travel again until October. Yeah. I mean, we'll see if that actually happens. I feel like something's going to pop up. I know. I've been thinking and, about throwing a trip like There's to no LA way we get there. through September and we haven't traveled i've been thinking about just going out to la for okay. a couple of days by myself i just i feel like september is that season where things start cooling off and you're gonna want to go somewhere yeah i get an itch that or i feel like maybe we should be traveling in august while it's still hot and then in september we can enjoy it not being as well hot. that's why i did september the whole month at home yeah so I'm just kind of sad because there were some creator meetups and stuff we were supposed to be doing along the way. We're, yeah. It's not that we're not doing any of it now. It's just getting pushed back. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm a little bummed about that because I feel like I find it really motivating and exciting to see other people in our job. Yeah. Yeah. And not to mention, yeah, um, other people are busy too. We're not the only ones in the world who are busy with kids and life and work. So yeah, uh, it turns out they also have to cancel plans occasionally. Yeah. Actually, we never... Do we ever cancel plans? I don't think we've ever canceled in our lives. We're never the people that will cancel a plan. We We will will... spread ourselves to absolute annihilation. We will run ourselves through the ground Yep. to make plans that... We will attend (laughs) six feet under. (laughs) We'll, We'll, yeah, we'll attend anything. We're really bad about that. <laughs> That's why we've ended up where we are in this season of our lives. Yeah, we've got two yes people with no schedule management. It's so bad. Mm-hmm. But, you know, come along on oversharing to yeah. find out <laughs> how we get better. <laughs> I hope. Yeah. yeah. Or just slowly degrade. Yeah. Anyway. Could be anything. What's what do we have? What do we have to update? It's been two weeks. What have we done? We oh. were we, we told them about our road trip. Yeah. And yeah. we've just been really resetting, I feel like. We went home. Yeah. Went so back to Missouri. That was, again, part of what made it a little more challenging to record on the road, which, I mean, we've done it, but it just, there's not it's a good hard. space and with both kids. And this is a that. lot of equipment. If you're watching on YouTube, the video is finally back. Sorry <sighs> yeah. that we haven't had, I've had so many people DM me and be like, are you guys just not videoing now? The worst part, I still haven't uploaded the one video we do have, like, the, the most recent one has video, I think, right? Matt's fired. I'm I'm not 
killing it. We're the world's worst content creators. I want to be, so I follow so many creators that are such fantastic, organized people. Mm -hmm. And I want to be that. It's a real asset in the self-employed game. Well, and when I was doing that, that's the part that confuses me because when I was doing photography full time, I Mm -hmm. was very much that. Yeah. I mean, that's such a schedule based business too. But so is this. Sure. I I would argue that this is even more schedule based. Yeah. But we're just our own schedule. We're, we're both sides of the schedule there. Yeah. So. Matt's really hard to hold accountable. (laughs) And you really don't like doing accountability holding accountability yeah it makes me feel like i'm your mom yeah and you avoid that not like specifically your mother just like a mother that i'm mothering you yes which you because you're 31 yeah like you're a grown-ass man (laughs) i mean i'm i'm 31 at least you should be able to upload a youtube video if you say you're going to yeah you know i can make that happen in the next two hours but okay again it's not a I have no excuses. What are you doing with your hands right now? That's interesting. Uh, you know, just doing things so you can call me out on the podcast. Watch the video if you want to see what I'm doing with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's always trying to push people to YouTube. We really haven't been up to much. We've no. been cleaning. Trying to clean this house up. Trying to pick up, you know, do the laundry and then actually get it put away. Yeah. Which has happened once or twice and then we do more laundry. We've been making big plans or I have by myself for outside. <laughs> Yeah. What are you thinking? Uh, the garage is the next big project we want to tackle, which I think we talked about on the last episode. Yeah. Uh, and I did go out. I've gone outside twice and looked at it for like five to 10 minutes and then gotten overwhelmed and walked inside and worked on something different. It doesn't help when it's been so hot. No, it You doesn't. walk outside, but it's, you look at the garage, you go, oh, this it was is a terrible job. It was beautiful outside yesterday. I don't know what it's like. It's also beautiful outside today. I didn't even realize it was nice yesterday because it rained in the morning. Yeah. So I just it was 85. It was, it's 82 today. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we really, we should do that. Matt's considering just no longer recording the podcast and just going and sitting out oh, in the we'll garage. We'll do a little 10 minute hitter <laughs> just so people know that we're still doing it, kind of. <laughs> You're right. We're still doing it. I mean, if it was 10 minutes long, it would be a little bit different than the, the previous formats, though, I'm saying. Right. Yeah. It'd I thought... be more of a, like a proof of life <laughs> pod. <laughs> proof of life pod maybe we're still here we still have the equipment to record maybe we should rebrand yeah as proof of life uh-huh <laughs> I, I don't know I, that has a weird implication i feel like oh okay that's fine yeah bad dad mean mom bad dad mean mom yeah i'm sure we've done something i feel like i'm nailing it you're nailing it that's no, good that's not true uh, we went on our trip to Springfield and I didn't bring a pump or any kind of bottles. And I said I was going to pack the pack and play and did not. Yeah. Uh, so. so bad dad, mean mom. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely packing. Still not good at that. And really, I feel like that didn't end up being any kind of problem for our child. Either one of those. No. It just um, it made it harder for us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we needed to bring the pack and play so that. We had a bassinet set up for the little guy, yeah. and uh, we didn't, so. We figured it out. We had to, yeah, assemble one. But G slept in a big girl bed again. She, she slept in my childhood room. That Was that weird for you? Yeah, very weird. Yeah? Yeah, because I kept thinking, it doesn't look like my childhood room anymore, because my parents have, I actually, I made a TikTok from my childhood bathroom. Oh, yeah, with your short, short counters and your... Low, low toilet. And my parents have completely painted everything in our house. So nothing looks like it did when I was growing up for the most part. The kitchen, the kitchen got remodeled when I was in middle school Mm -hmm. and it still looks the same as it did through middle school and high school. Sure. But the living room's been painted a different color. My bedroom is no, my, my bedroom and my ceiling was purple growing up and it's no longer that. Uh, And then my bathroom was dark purple and yeah. it's now gray you had a dark purple and orange theme orange and lime green yeah it was very 2000s garish what does that mean like, is that our word of the week it could be should i make sure i have the proper def- like it's uh like it really stands out kind of grating yeah but that was really popular in the 2000s i feel like i never saw it anywhere but your house 
Are you kidding? Well, how many girls' bedrooms did you see in high school? <laughs> None. That was somebody back me up here in the two thousands. I feel like I'll I'll look it up later. What was but, the inspiration? Where was this coming from? Oh, I don't know, Lisa Frank. I have no idea. Yeah. But it, it, I swear to you, and a lot of people had like uh, baby blue, like their whole room would be baby blue. Yeah. Or a lot of people did like zebra and hot pink. A lot of people had Paris themes. Okay, yeah. Is any of this standing yeah. out? Yeah, I feel like those hurt my eyes as well, but I do remember a zebra no, hot like pink era. No, like 2000s bedrooms were, they Which hurt a lot of eyes. Which then pivoted to college girls with Chevron. For sure. Yeah, we went to a pastel palette with Chevron. A hundred percent, yeah. Yeah. And bobble necklaces. Do you remember the bubble necklaces? Uh, less so. So like, the that bubble was necklaces, impact, they the had Chevron. like the big, uh, all Charms? the big circles no. next to each other, and they would be like two tiered necklaces. Okay. Yeah, I, I can. And people had them in all different colors, and the peplum tops. Oh, I don't know. The thing is, mm-hmm. I feel like fashion now for girls isn't as. Uh, so specific like everybody was wearing and there is some of that right now like everybody's wearing maybe like athletic sets like sure you know like a legging and bra everybody's got set them. yeah yeah or something like that but there's nothing like the pico top paired with a bubble necklace it's like you would go out in college when i was a freshman in college <laughs> you'd go out on a weekend and it would just be a sea of girls and pico tops and bubble yeah. necklaces there's more of a branch in styles now is what you're you're yeah. saying like you've got more options you can go this way or well, that way or i think there were options back sure. then probably but why <laughs> why were we all doing the exact same thing i have no idea and no idea i remember i wore a floral uh pantsuit to my senior college uh senior night thing mm-hmm. and i felt like i stood out so much <laughs> like i was like oh no maybe i shouldn't have worn this but now looking back I would totally wear that. Yeah. And I feel like nobody else would even blink an eye. No, no. Uh, yeah. I suppose bold out of the box fashion choices are, I feel a little more celebrated Yeah. in this era. I'm trying to really lean into basics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of bold choices. Well, no, I was just, it kind of led me into thinking about, I, I made a video this week about, kind of redefining my style postpartum because Mm -hmm. it feels postpartum's a really weird experience and i i do agree that in some context everybody experiences this a little bit just as you age and your body changes but when you have a child it happens really quickly instead of gradually Mm -hmm. uh it's like i'm back to my same size that i was pre babies like weight The, the number on the scale is about the same yeah but all of my clothes fit completely differently but when i look in the mirror i don't feel like i look all that different and so it's this confusing thing where i'm not insecure about my body when i look in the mirror but then when i put like clothes on i feel terrible like why do i look so not right oh just because nothing is fitting the way that It was when it did when you bought it. Right. Well, and the styles that I had found that were really flattering, even Mm -hmm. though when I look in the mirror without clothes on, I don't feel like I look that different. When I put clothes on, all of a sudden I'm like, this doesn't flatter me anymore. Sure. Sure. Does that? Yeah, that makes sense. It's hard to communicate. But I've been really uh, diving in and ordering some new staple pieces. I'm not like getting rid of all my clothes or anything because a lot of my items, it's not that they don't fit or don't work anymore. They just need to be styled differently. Sure. So I'm trying to, I ordered some new denim. Okay. Because all my denim's too big. Oh, too big. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Kind of. Yeah. I put on my high loose pants that I adore and wear all the time. Mm -hmm. They're massive. They're a little high, a little too loose. Yeah. Yeah. They are, they are high (laughs) and they are loose, man. Uh, High is a little tough to go too loose on because there's no way to hold them up. No, and they go all the way up. They touch my rib cage now. Yeah. I don't understand how or when that happened. We might have to get you into the belt game. That's what I was thinking when I put them on. I was like, I definitely need a belt. Yeah. I don't own any belts anymore. No, you've never owned very many belts. But I have some dresses. Even when belts were like the thing. I know. You didn't own any. I have some dresses that would look really good with belts. Yeah. 
So maybe that's something I need to be looking for. Anyway, I ordered new denim and I ordered some new like basic tees. And I think that I'm going to really lean into my day-to-day style just being really clean and simple and really not trendy, like, like denim and a t-shirt that fits well. You're like Steve Jobs in Crop tee. No. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, Black turtlenecks every day. Not necessarily. Like I, I want to switch it up, but just a, a wide array of basics. Okay. And then I can, I'm not anti fun pieces. I just feel like the fun pieces in my closet don't get the same amount of wear because it's just not what I lean mm-hmm. toward. Yeah. I think especially right now you're looking for something that uh, feels comfortable. Yeah. Like feels reliable. 100%. And sometimes the fun pieces aren't the, so reliable. The sweatshirt I'm wearing right now mm-hmm. is, is a, a new old reliable. I was going to say, I've seen this thing a lot. a lot. I got it this year. I Aerie was running a sale and I'm obsessed with it. This it's, is one of those pieces that I'm just going to have to forcibly wash when it smells too bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so soft. There's going to be a day where I see it when you're not wearing it and be like, I don't know the last time that was washed because I have seen it worn for a week, two weeks. <laughs> so I am bad about that. Yeah. I live but in the I won't same dry it. four or five. Please don't. I never do. You know I don't. I know you don't. I, I treasure sweatshirts. King. King. Uh, so I saw the Barbie movie. Okay. Uh, and I think that you should go. I think we should go see it. Oh, I was like, by myself? You can go by yourself. Weird move. but I was thinking we could go together. But yeah, I was going to say maybe I'll do that early in the day. So it, I don't know. I think that's less weird. If I go see Barbie at one thirty in the afternoon, you could take G. Just me and me and G to see a PG thirteen movie. I was gonna say she definitely needs you know parental. You I'll are a like, parent. Yeah. I'm not. I saying don't think I there's can't. anything actually. Yeah. I think there are some Is it language? No. No. They they get in. Not anything worse than she hears at home. I'm sure. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> she could see probably R rated movies. Uh, if that were the bar. Yeah. But no, I don't think there's anything that I would, you know, raise a flag of her seeing. All right. Um, I thought it was really good. I thought it was really good. I can see why people think that it's making such an impact and I, I'm curious your thoughts. So I'd like you to go see, I went with my girls. I was going to say, this is a tough conversation if we're going to try and dive into Barbie. Well, I'm not trying to dive into it. We're, we're actually talking about it on next week's episode of middle ground, but I just it was good well then i'll get your aggregated takes we also saw oppenheimer yes we did that was fun eh, not fun. The, not a fun movie no <laughs> never mind i just meant getting out of the house that's it, something we did yeah we went to a movie for the first time in like three years we did date night. well no not three years we went last year for g's birthday because our our ac was out and it was wildly hot i must say <laughs> i haven't told you this yet so i okay. went to barbie with all the girls and Matt just said we haven't been to a movie in two years or whatever. <laughs> but I showed up and Matt still has a list through oh, AMC. Yeah. And so Oops. I used his A list account while the line was crazy long for snacks. Mm-hmm. So I just took all the girls with me and we went in the A list line and I just put all of our snacks together and had people Venmo me. Sure. Uh, and all the girls were like, What is this? Like, why are you on this? <laughs> why are you like, a celebrity at yeah, AMC Theaters? How many movies do you go to? I said, well, we pay to be on A-list because, well, we did We anyway. used to. We yeah. used to. I canceled mine. You canceled yours, and I thought I had canceled mine. They So they paused them all during, like, early pandemic because nobody could even go to theaters. So, like, I wasn't being billed for a long time, and I guess I missed where they started back in, but it was while we had kids, and so I was not seeing three movies a week, which we probably well, were actually doing at some point. Yeah, we, we would see. Or at see, least two. I bet we, we did two a week. We'd probably see a movie to two a week. But anyway, so we go, that happens with the snacks. So first I get our tickets, then that happens with the snacks. Then we get to the theater and we're up on that like separate little platform with our six seats. Mm-hmm. So it was like almost like we had our own private oh, section wow. of the theater where yeah. it was just us, which was not intentional. Then my friend V sits down next to me and her chair wasn't working. Oh no. And I go, Oh, it's probably not plugged in. She goes, what do you mean? How do you know that? <laughs> and I said, well, if you go tell the girl, they'll come up, they'll have you pick up all your stuff and then they'll flip the chair over and they'll plug it back in. <laughs> She's like, how often do you go to the movies? <laughs> You know, like uh, once or twice in the last two years. But we used to go so much. Anyway, we did. they came and they flipped the chair over and it, in fact, was not plugged in. There you go. So it got fixed. You might, I mean, you should just a side hustle, do a little AMC theater. 
Yeah, why work? am I? Why is AMC not want to work with me? Oh yeah, wow. Yeah. Did they do collabs? Sponsor this podcast, AMC. I. When are we gonna go see movies? But I love going to the movies. It was I something. Really it was, do. That was the great part of having it. So with AMC, we're about to just promote AMC Stubbs <laughs> A list or whatever it is. You could see three movies a week. Well, for like what happened was we had Movie Pass before that burned. Oh yeah, burned to hell. Yeah, when. Yeah, the the peak days of Movie Pass back when you were like, you're like, this can't possibly work. This doesn't make any sense. It was like eight dollars a month for as many movies as you can see. You just couldn't see like two in one day. I think was the limit. Uh huh. So you could see thirty movies a month, but like they would pay the movie theater the ticket price, and then you're like, this can't possibly be. No profitable it was not that, no it that... went under and then when it went under amc well maybe during when movie pass amc came out with theirs yeah it was know. it was i think it was kind of like nearing the end and people were having issues with it and so but it brought a lot of people to theaters because mm-hmm. they were like oh well instead of you know 15 dollars every time i go i can pay 15 dollars a month and go as much as i want well we had a lot of fun with that actually Another friend that I was with last night, she said her and her husband live like a block from the movie theater. And so before they had their mm-hmm. daughter, they would, that's what they would do for date night. They would just walk to the theater. We didn't live that close, but it was something where if we didn't have anything going on, we're like, oh, you want to see a movie? Let's go see what was out. Yeah. And so we saw And that's what she was saying. Stuff. She said a lot of times, like if the movie wasn't good, they weren't afraid to walk out halfway through because <laughs> whatever. Exactly. And we would see things that you normally just would be like yeah i'll wait or we saw some good movies that i probably would not have otherwise given time of day because i don't watch like a lot of people like oh wait till it uh it's streaming yeah you can watch it at home and i don't watch movies at home i used to as a kid maybe now that we have kids we'll do like movie nights and make it into a deal where we make popcorn and it's like you know a whole thing sure but we don't watch movies every once in a while I feel like you like to watch a movie over TV, though. Oh, a hundred percent. I and it's not that I don't. I don't know. I don't like the feeling of binging TV. Yeah, it makes I enjoy me feel the lack really of feeling bad during. <laughs> See, I get ang- like it makes me antsy. Yeah. I don't even want to say anxious because it's not anxious. It's antsy. It's like, ooh, what can we? Yeah. What are we accomplishing? Yeah, you want to go do something productive. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Went to the movie theater. Yeah, we did. And Oppenheimer was good. It was good. Very, uh, yeah, not uplifting. Not a fun movie, exactly. No, but the cast was incredible. Yeah, yeah, they did a great job with it. But a little a little dark. Yeah. Way bleak. above my head, if I'm being completely transparent. They, they did do a lot of quantum physics talk. There were a lot of times I had to look at Matt and go, okay, can you explain to me what <laughs> just happened? And then you would break it down real stupid for me. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not going to pretend to know quantum mechanics and quantum physics because I don't. No, but it, that wasn't it. It was mostly dynamics. You're like, hey, why do they feel this way about something happening? And I'd yeah. be like, well, he said this and that means that something is happening and they're making their choices based on that information. Yeah. I needed yeah. help with that kind of stuff. Not too bad though. No. Yeah. I followed pretty good, I think. Yeah. I don't understand how he was such a womanizer. I, I mean, we looked up pictures of him. Pretty good looking dude back in the day. Yeah. Super smart. Kind of like a smart man celebrity, I think. Okay. You know? Yeah. He was like the the super genius boy of scientists. <laughs> super genius boy of scientists. That's not a good title Make at all. Make that a shirt. But, yep. There you go. All right. Uh, word, uh, not word of the week. Uh... Do you gosh, want to talk about great. how many movies Jason Statham was previewed oh. in? Is he the like preeminent actor of our time? <laughs> how wild was that? <laughs> we were in the theater and like three of the movies that they yeah. uh, showed us before the feature film started had Jason Statham as he's, the star. He's working his ass off. I mean, props. He's he's in The Meg 2, which probably not going to see that one. He's in Fast 10. Yeah. He's in uh, Expend Four Bulls. <laughs> Expendables uh, 4. Yep. Yeah. Those were uh, mid- several of which were previewed during the movie. And you're like, wow. The Expendables one, I thought they were remaking Mr. and Mrs. Smith. But with yeah. Megan Fox and-, and Megan Fox. And I was like, weird move. Weird didn't combo. Know, didn't know people were clamoring for a remake. It's well, not it, but it does start <laughs> similarly. Yeah. Yeah. That was wild. Yeah. 
Anyway, I, what I was trying to say before is Greg's Reads of the Week. Greg's Reads of the Week. You want to intro us? Tell us what it yeah, is. Yeah, well, Greg's your dad, my father-in-law, and he reads a lot of news. And so he sends us articles that he thinks are pertinent to us. And then we rate those articles based on their headline, usually, on how much anxiety that headline gives us, one to five. Correct. So. All right. Option number one. Article number one. Option. I don't know. Article number one. Dopamine plays an unexpected role in both body movement and Parkinson's disease. Uh, it's like a one, not really not terribly anxiety. I mean, that's kind of the whole, it's one of the main principles of Parkinson's. So I don't know necessarily how mind blowing that was for me. Okay. It seems kind of intuitive to anything that says Parkinson's immediately gets like a three out of five. For okay. Me. Fair, fair. Parkinson's stresses me out. Yeah. I mean, ideally, ideally, we don't have to deal with it, but yeah, my dad but, has it. So, so we do. <laughs> it's real possible that, you know, if it's a genetic form. Okay. This article made me giggle. Mm-hmm. Dad accompanied this link with an oldie, but good one to understand for anyone investing. <laughs> How to double your money every seven years. Okay. Two out of five. It gives me zero anxiety. Yeah. It's the rule of 72, which dad has been pounding into my head oh, you've since had I this was in like your brain. six years old. Yes. So I don't know if I've ever said this on the podcast, <laughs> but when I was little and I wanted to buy something, I should make a TikTok out of this. Yeah. <laughs> this is ridiculous. And I wanted to buy something like, so let's say I wanted to buy a Game Boy because mm-hmm. that's something I would have wanted. And it's $50. My dad. It's a cheap Game Boy. Uh, yeah, but I didn't want to. Yeah. I wanted to be able you to do easy the math. math. Yeah. So, Not seventy nine ninety eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, my dad would go, okay, but you could save that fifty dollars, and if you save that fifty dollars, you have like he, I would be like ten or whatever, and he said, if you retire at sixty five, mm-hmm. that means that you have fifty five years, fifty five divided by seven. It's almost is, eight. Let's say eight. Yeah. So uh, that means that $50 is 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, uh, $12,800. Yeah. So then dad would look at me and be like, is that Game Boy worth almost $13,000 to you? <laughs> <laughs> And the funny thing is, I wasn't even investing when I was like eight. So it's not like I actually no. took that fifty dollars and it was probably a crisp fifty dollar bill that you got for your birthday or something. Right. Like I and so anyway, yeah. I ended up never being a spender because it was everything was so dang expensive. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean your candy bars were I mean hundreds of dollars right so that's just outrageous the rule of 72 so your money doubles every yeah. seven years every <laughs> seven yeah. is that right yeah if properly invested if you follow at whatever this article's guidance let's see it says the mm-hmm. results to use the rule of 72 divide the number 72 by an investment's expected annual return the result is the number of years it will take roughly to double your money okay so Got it. anyway yeah but rule of thumb uh, i think a pretty reasonable interest rate will double it every seven years yeah or i guess that's about 10 percent. that's which is a pretty i think that's a that's a good growth but yeah. like not insurmountable anyway okay article number three these bizarre worms are probably coming to a backyard near you it gave me like a four i saw the picture <laughs> of the worms they looked real yeah. real gross yeah uh-huh uh They've got like a hammerhead well and it said this invasive species can grow well over a foot long and secretes oh. a toxin to digest their prey outside okay. the body before they eat it yep i based on the size and the look five of the worms five, i was like five, five. i don't want anything to do with these worms and the idea that they're going to be in my backyard is a problem yeah i agree What's what? Anyway, you didn't. I read didn't. It, did you? I didn't read it. No. Okay. Yeah, it freaked me out from the picture. Yeah, I uh, I did not. Mm-hmm. It might be killing my trees or something. I hope not. I hope not. Also, but I I didn't get deep into They're that. They're looking worms, people. Yeah. All right. Last article. These eight daily habits could add up to twenty four years to your life. New study says even adding only one may lead to an extra four years. That gave me like a three out of five. Oh really? I don't. Do I want twenty four extra years? Um, That's a long time. 
see to me it's funny because i i read this one Mm -hmm. and the things are just general knowledge like make healthy choices 100 percent. one exercising okay (laughs) two not having an addiction to opioids (laughs) Okay. Yep. I mean, like, not to let la- I mean, that is a real problem. No, but, but the, the, it, it the will habit, improve your lifespan your habit, if you're not addicted to opioids. Right. Your habit is don't have an addiction to like. Got okay. it. Yep. Okay. Uh, three. Avoiding smoking. Check. Sure. Yep. Four. Managing your stress levels. Okay. Five. Adhering to a healthy diet. Easy peasy. Six. Hot. Hot. <laughs> not binge drinking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seven, prioritizing good sleep, and eight, maintaining positive social relationships. I mean, eight's the only one that's even like not. So don't make unhealthy choices. Exercise. Try to keep your mental health as good as you can. Right. Riveting. Mind right? blowing. Like it just wasn't the cream of the crop of articles, in my <laughs> opinion. I hope there wasn't a a coded message in there for us of which one we should be doing. Probably the not binge drinking. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. The heavy drinkers that we are. Yeah. We're very. (laughs) Yeah. Every, you know, once a month we might have a drink. You're probably Uh, once a quarter. quarter, If that, I know know, I'm really not annually. I really want to say like, so there are a lot of creators online who don't drink. Yeah who they say they're like i don't drink that's like a part of their platform Mm -hmm. and the thing is i've realized about myself is i don't like to be anything yeah like i'm like you're not a stance no well because what what if i want to have a drink Mm -hmm. and i've told everybody that i don't drink and i really don't like i have maybe one or two drinks a year yeah it wouldn't be a life-changing change for you to be like oh i don't drink anymore would, no, it would it change would my life absolutely zero percent. None. Yeah, I just wouldn't get a margarita when we go out to eat, like at our anniversary. Yeah, if somebody makes a non-alcoholic tequila, that would pretty much be. I'd be fine with yeah. me. I don't drink for the alcohol. No, I I enjoy tequila, like the flavor of tequila, which I know people think is psycho. Yeah, I, and you know what's weird about that too, is I watched some girls take shots the other day, like they were at a brand trip and they took mm-hmm. shots for a video, and all the girls were like making faces and taking their chasers and i thought to myself why am i such a weirdo uh again probably depends on the tequila like some of it is pretty abrasive some of it is good yeah you you'll i guess the thing is you'll you'll drink rail tequila yeah like bottom shelf and you'll you'll sip that too. You're but if you get whiskey anywhere near me, I don't even want to smell it. No, cardboard. I think is what you always compare yeah, it to. It, it smells and tastes like cardboard <laughs> to me, <laughs> like freshly manufactured cardboard. I love the idea that you're well versed in freshly manufactured cardboard. Although if it smells like a, a paper mill, that's terrible. They smell <laughs> super bad. Oh. But I don't think you've spent a lot of time around one. But don't you think, I always think about this, I really would like to be in a video with all those people because I feel like no one would expect me to be able to take a shot of tequila. No. It's not a very, like, on the personality thing. You just do it real slow. Yeah. Sip it. Yeah. There you go. Anyway. Look at you, cool all. girl drinker. I'm so cool. Mm-hmm. She doesn't even <laughs> flinch. She's awesome so hardcore so now i feel like maybe i shouldn't have talked no we're <laughs> not what i was trying no, to not insinuate at all. Not at all. in any capacity you want you want i the think word we the just week? talked about how i cringe when i smell whiskey that's true yeah <laughs> just a little baby i'm <laughs> just a little baby okay what's my word of the week <laughs> your word of the week this one you may know oh azure a-z-u-r-e a-z-u-r-e as as you were as you are as you were as you were <laughs> as you were azure 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 yeah probably should have double checked the pronunciation on that one okay yeah what does it, it it's mean it's just like a, a color it's like a bright blue oh how do you pr- look up how you yeah i better get that. the phonetic uh breakdown i don't on believe that. you that it's azure well the phonetic spelling isn't helping me at all i'm gonna have to azure azure, azure wasn't that far off azure azure (laughs) (laughs) azure 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 
That's we buried it now. <laughs> What's it's a shade of blue? Yeah, it's like a bright blue. Okay. Bright blue in color, like the, a cloudless sky. Okay. The middle school girls were decorating their rooms in Azure. Azure. Now it's really it's the one of those words that now I've got in my head and it it doesn't sound like anything anymore. Yeah, well, that happens to the best of us. Are we ready for some voicemails? Yeah, let's do some voicemails. Let's hear what you guys have been up to. Voicemails. Hi, Matt and Joe. My name is Jessica. I'm from Southeast Virginia. So pretty much picture the very south of Virginia, the very bottom corner, and that's where I'm at. I wanted to say I love your show, love the podcast, love everything you're doing. Keep it up. Uh, But my question for you was, my husband and I are currently trying to conceive baby number two. Um, If we are successful this first month of trying, um, our babies will be about 22 months to to two years apart, and which I love that age gap. However, I am feeling a little bit of mom guilt of having a second child concerning my first child so and I've heard the quote you know your love doesn't divide it multiplies however I'm still super nervous on that factor so I was just wondering do you have any advice on those that are kind of facing this mental block and like I said I come from a big family of eight siblings so I am so excited to be able to give my child that but like I said, that mom guilt. So I was just wondering if you guys had any advice. Keep up the great work and love you guys. So my hot take is there's always pros and there's always cons. And I think that as parents, we have a tendency to really focus in on cons and shame ourselves almost Mm -hmm. rather than being aware of the pros. And this is definitely one of those circumstances because Yes. Is there a chance that your first child is going to get maybe less solo dedicated one-on-one time when you have a second child? For sure. For sure. But there are also all kinds of things that they gain through having a sibling. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's a concern for you, I think often speaks to the quality of parent that you are and the care that you're giving and the thought that you're putting into your actions and that alone speaks volumes yeah yeah being very intentional with that decision making you're you're probably making good intentional decisions in other areas of their life yeah your love does multiply you don't multiply so that is you definitely are not going to be able to the same level of attention to both kids and especially with a new baby they require a lot more, a lot different care than your, your toddler will. And so, but the thing is, if it's like, gee, the the toddler is way more into the baby and way more excited to have a sibling. And so they may not get as much attention from you, but they will get a lot of positive feelings, like having another child there And as a child, so I know that I have older sisters, but I grew up an only child. Mm -hmm. I, my sisters did not live in my home. Uh, and I was my mom's only child. I grew up alone. Uh, and my mom was incredible and very involved and poured everything into me. Uh, and you know, she was a stay at home mom and was very thoughtful and intentional. And yet there are a lot of things that I feel like just weren't possible to give without having a sibling like i i think siblings are such a gift yeah very different experience from my perspective mm-hmm. i i think that now granted some families that's not the circumstance like our like like my family you know my mom couldn't have more kids that was the situation it's not didn't you know, think she could have the first one yeah didn't think she could have me and so it was a privilege getting to be raised by her and being an only child and having the experience that i did mm-hmm. But I, I think there are also a lot of really beautiful things about siblings. So yeah. I, I wouldn't get too wrapped up in it if you no. can. They, I mean, yeah, some of that is just an unavoidable kind of in your head thing. But yeah, your kid's going to really most likely appreciate having a sibling there. Maybe not right away, but they'll, they'll get used to it. 
Hey, Joe and Matt. My name is Abby. Um, and excuse how terrible I probably sound. I'm a little sick right now. But I was actually listening back on your older podcast. And I was curious how your New Year's resolution was going with your dates that you had to do. I think it was like two a month. And one of you planned one and the other one planned one later on in the month. And I know Joe picked you guys going to the optometrist, but I haven't really heard much since then so i'm curious if you guys kept up with it and what you guys have been doing um love the podcast though keep up the good work matt you want to tell her about how uh it's going super great don't ask about it (laughs) Uh, definitely haven't miserably failed in this uh i've done pretty good yeah i've done yeah you've done much better i've done about one a month for us yeah um getting us a (laughs) new attorney (laughs) so red i'm matching oh, my shirt my gosh i've never seen you turn red like that before oh yeah well youtube.com if you want to see that are you okay <laughs> no i'm great yeah uh M- matt did a date in may yeah yep matt's done one date this year <laughs> uh, yeah yeah um, so it's going swimmingly uh, yeah it's not going very well <laughs> i <laughs> So what have we been doing? Well, I'm trying to think. We we went to the movies. We did. Uh, the Matt and I did a date out in Bentonville, like a double date out with yeah. friends out in Bentonville for mm-hmm. the Bentonville Film Festival. I'm trying to think of other things that we've done. I've been pretty... We've done so much travel that... That's part like, of it. Intentionally going out of our house when we are home has seems, often felt like... It seems reckless. Mm, what if we didn't what if we laid down but that's not an excuse for never doing it which is where i'm at track record wise yeah you you planned our anniversary i did completely by yourself i did so that was good Mm -hmm. you were also worn out at that time so we that almost didn't happen but yeah yeah we we made it well i think it's been extra hard being postpartum yeah like just new baby Harder to get a babysitter, not necessarily get a babysitter, but just I have to pump and do all the things. Yeah, yeah. There's you. You have to be much more. Uh, anyway, we're aware making of the excuses. Timing. The point is, this was a really good reminder to Matt that people are yeah. listening. Yeah, they do listen to this, don't they? Yeah, and mm-hmm. while I won't hold them accountable, maybe y'all can. Yeah. Perfect. How Perfect. you feeling? Uh, embarrassed. You feel like you're gonna get off this podcast and plan a date night? I guess. Yeah, might as well. Yeah. We did have another voicemail, but uh, it was very windy. And she was more. asking about the oh. two year sleep regression that they're experiencing right now. Two two year? Two year. Did okay. we have a two year sleep regression? Um, I think that was probably around when um it wasn't that she wasn't sleeping through the night, but she would really push back on, on bedtime. Bedtime. Yeah. Which we're having a bit of a moment with. I think also. that's more our traveling than anything. Yeah. I really do. We've been having a lot of trouble with, because be- our bedtime routine just changes so much when we're on mm-hmm. the road. And then when we get home, she's like, yeah. Mm. What if I go to bed at 1030 like I did when we were on the road? Yeah. Yeah. But our, our little guy is ready for a crib, man. Oh, he has outgrown his bassinet badly. Yeah. He really can't sleep in there because if he moves at all, he hits the sides and he's like, no. Yeah. But we don't have his crib in yet. We're waiting for yeah. it to ship. And so we're just. He's napping in there now, though. Yeah. He's, he's napping He's in thriving when he gets crib. to sleep there. Yeah. He takes really good rests. Yeah. Uh, advice. I mean, it's temporary. If you can build a good routine, great. If you can't um just try to be understanding with your kid i guess i don't know um yeah we just kind of on the days it's not good you just kind of get your ass kicked i think we do a lot of like it's temporary Mm -hmm. and so why get really worked up about it because it's not forever you have never in your life seen it's like when you see kids trying to um hit milestones when they're babies like and people are so worried their child hasn't sat up yet and yes sometimes there are real issues and there is a point to where you should be concerned Mm -hmm. and talk with your doctor but for the most part how many high school kids have you seen that can't sit up (laughs) no you know what i mean like more often than not your doctor will let you know when you need to be concerned yeah you can ask your doctor anything yes it's not something you need to act on until 
there's there's real reason to right I think people just get very in their head and I feel like that stress and that agonizing makes the whole experience harder whereas we're like oh well tonight wasn't good yeah we'll try again tomorrow you know yeah there was now that I think about it there was a period where she was like she wanted to be in our bed and mm-hmm. she doesn't really ever do that so there was there was some nights there around two years where she had to start in our bed she never sleeps in our bed no no honestly she's terrible at it she thinks it's a party when she's in our bed yeah so she's like guys we're all together let's have fun yeah and we're like we're going to sleep and yeah. then she's like poke you in the eye poke you in the <laughs> eye poke you in the nose <laughs> boop boop and you're like please stop yeah i'm gonna go put you in your crib for sure all right another voicemail hey joy matt just wanted to say that I love the podcast and I love the topics that you guys cover. And I'm also a big fan of the little, like, I don't know, harmless play fighting that you guys do on the podcast and the bickering. It reminds me a lot of me and my boyfriend. Um, my question for you guys is how did you guys go about introducing G to baby foods or like, how did you guys mm-hmm. kind of transition her over to like table foods? And then are you guys planning on doing the same thing for Rory or do you think you'll go a different route? Thanks guys. It's a great question. Yeah. I can't be around. Yeah. Actually this, it's this week. Mm-hmm. We'll start next week when we get home from the wedding. Yeah. Uh, R starts on solids. Yes. And I'm horrified. I hate it. He's so ready. He has been wanting to eat like real he's food. Like, so he's so unbelievably big. ready. He's so big. And so, and he can do a lot of the things that they say that they need to do uh, to eat solid foods, but we've put it off until fully six months. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he wants to eat badly. He's yep. just, every time people are eating, he just stares and tries yeah. to grab and just chomps his mouth. Yeah, he's undoubtedly ready. But we did baby led weaning. Yes. Uh, so we never did, uh, you know, we did some purees here and there. Mm-hmm. Just, um, but for the most part, I would say what ninety percent. Yeah, we had very little. Like even the puree baby food type stuff was more like in the pouches kind of mm-hmm. deal. So we 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 did almost all baby led weaning. We followed. Uh, oh, what was it called? There was an app that I used that oh, everybody yeah. recommends uh and i'm it's not going to come to mind for me right now Shoot. i'll f- i'll find it and we can yeah. put it in the show notes down below for you but uh it showed me what because you can give babies pretty much anything adults mm-hmm. can have for the most part uh you want to be aware if you're giving them allergens so for us we would introduce like a different food each day and we did a lot of allergen heavy sh- uh foods relatively early just so yeah. we knew and g actually had an allergy reaction to greek yogurt eggs. and if, eggs eggs for a while yeah a few different things uh but it was so minor that our doctor recommended um giving her those in small quantities yeah, again and again working, and she working grew through it. out of it but loves eggs now yeah so uh yeah it's where you cut up the food small and kind of let them self-feed and it went really well for us yeah yeah there is a little bit there's a kind of a fine line between them choking and them figuring out how to eat. And so that was not a good, uh, I can't do it. You're, you weren't really able to be around to no. judge which, I which side of it. things were. And the thing is I did a lot of research on everything. Like I looked a lot of actual medical journals and stuff and <laughs> everything came back to say that there really isn't a higher chance of choking doing baby led weaning versus mm-hmm. purees because they're learning the same like motions and stuff with their whatever muscles and everything yeah if if they can get it down right either way they have to work on the the swallowing and the chewing and right. all that stuff but i found we we chose baby led weaning because there is a lot more positive feedback on having positive uh texture mm-hmm. experiences like not feeling um you know, avoidant of yeah. certain textured foods, et cetera. And we always just gave G small bits of whatever we were eating for dinner. Yep. So she didn't get a separate meal. She didn't do anything like that. Like if we were having Thai food, I would cut up Thai food for her. If we were having Mexican, I would cut up Mexican yeah. food for her. Once she got into, was more proficient at eating. Yes. You were, you were definitely just giving her pieces of what we did. Right. We did do the little spoon plates for a little bit. Those, Those were are great. Sick. Yes. 
little spoon is so cool yeah it's, truly it's not a uh not an ad but uh, no but i that's something that i absolutely loved and we did work with them yes when we had g so it we actually got turned on to their product because they wanted to work together mm-hmm. and we used it for a while fell in love with it, it and then killer. we collaborated with them uh but have not worked with them since because they we had, should yeah, reach they, back out man yeah they had baby lid weaning like plates little plates that they made like, it was fantastic it was real food and like had flavor and was not just a a bland plate of nothing yeah so and it was very easy if like even if we weren't crushing it on our meals to put a plate together yes and very so convenient that did get us in through some some pinches for in sure terms of meals yeah i can't recommend that enough yeah they also do purees and some other stuff yeah but. they they'll do what you want but they have baby like specific baby led weaning plates and so yeah you, i forgot about that we should order some of those yeah we maybe need we'll to. order some when we get off the pod because mm-hmm. yeah we're we're at the point that we're starting to do we'll do breakfast lunch dinner and start introducing foods and yeah. nursing's gonna start declining and and the diapers are gonna get worse and, yeah uh, <gasps> yeah they get worse before they get better yeah <laughs> when are they better <laughs> when they go in the toilet yeah okay yeah okay so just a couple years yeah no big deal. It's going to happen also about our play fighting. Uh, I don't yeah. think we're playing. I mean, sometimes we're playing. Sometimes it's real. But like, that's also just life. <laughs> yeah. We, we bicker. We do bicker. That's our, sometimes it's a game. Sometimes we continue the bickering later. More seriously. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't bother me. No. Does it's, it bother you? No. No, I, I think that's, uh, if anything, if we're bickering, we're communicating. I don't feel like we're passive aggressive with it usually. Oh, you can be. I, <laughs> I was going to say, speak for yourself. But you know how a lot of people, they go back and forth and it's just like resentful statements? Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. feel like we necessarily do that. But no, maybe. usually there we get through, a, again, it's kind of a form of communication for us. Ooh. Like, I, I think we communicate things through our bickering a lot of times. We don't necessarily just go like, well, you're a piece of human garbage. Sometimes I do it. say that. That's true. Mostly about myself, though. I was going to say, normally we degrade ourselves, not the other yeah. person so much. I think you're great. Thanks. You're awesome. Thanks. Great hair, too. Thank you. Matt's been so complimentary of my hair today. You did a great job with it. Thank you. You did a whole tutorial. I did. It took me, I got to see how long it t- took me to do my hair start to finish. Mm-hmm. Nine and a half minutes. Nine and a half minutes. Not bad. Yeah. Speedy. Yeah. Isn't that funny? That's that I avoid doing it because I'm like, oh, it takes so long. Uh, yeah, and That's the number ridiculous. of things that take nine and a half minutes in our lives is just like Honestly, so few. So true. Anyway. Yeah. Well, on that note, can't wait to talk with you guys next week. Yeah. If you have anything you want to hear us talk about, let us know. Yeah, shoot us some topics. If there's anything we should be covering more in depth, we just kind of been bouncing around lately. So. Email, leave us a voicemail, do all the good things. Yep. Follow us on YouTube. We love you guys, and we'll talk soon. Bye. Bye.